Hi there, this is Ricochet again. Um, I'm going to show you how to put flags onto vehicles and add vent handlers to remove the flags when the vehicle gets destroyed. Um, what we have here is uh, off-road, a gas, a BTR80 and a BRM1K. So first thing we need to do is just customize these so they, they look a little bit more realistic um, relative to the terrain. Um, so um, if you right click on the vehicle, edit vehicle appearance, and in this case I think I want something that's a bit browner than that. Kind of. Hmm. Make it dark brown. Okay, that's fine. And sand, sand. Okay, this so one's still not right. Let's just go back here. Okay. All right. So now. Each of these vehicles can be obviously further customized. You, well, not all of them can be customized to the extent that the off-road can. Like for example, you can hide the doors, uh, hide the rear door. I'm going to leave it open. Okay, so these are vehicles. Now we're going to put flags on. Now, if you look at individual vehicles, you obviously got to take into account what the flag, where the flag position is going to be. Is it going to be obstructing the gunner's position? In this instance, I'm going to put the flag at the back at an angle. Um, on this vehicle, given that the gun most likely, unless it's shooting, obviously it's an AA gun, but it, it, I don't know if you've ever been shot by one of these things, it was quite unpleasant, especially if you are on the ground. Um, and obviously, I can't really position a flag anywhere here because the gun's going to turret's going to hit the flag so probably we'll either place it here or somewhere over there just outside of the arc on this one given that there are wheels or spare tires on the back we can remove that if you need to but you, this normally has um, soldiers sitting on it so I'm going to position it right at the back also at an angle like the off-road same thing with the, the BRM uh, I'm going to position it probably sticking out the back at an angle. Alright, so I've written a script to, for each of these vehicle types so that you don't have to go name the vehicles individually and create special flags, I mean individual flags for each of these objects. So um, in the init field on each of these vehicles there is a, a script with a no, no handle. It passes the vehicle uh, to the script and uh, runs a little a little uh, script called flag offroad.sqf same thing on this one this is runs the gas gas script this one runs the BTR script strangely enough BTR 80 and um, this one runs the BRM script I spent quite a lot of time working on the actual flag positions and uh, the offsets and the, the angle, the set uh, vector direction and up, uh, which is a really kind of a complicated um, command. And it's really recommended for people enjoy, who enjoy a little bit of a headache and just general pain and suffering. Um, the first part of this command deals with the direction and the second part, strangely enough, deals with the vertical position. So... Um, Anyway, these these positions were the ones that I kind of came up with in the uh, an orientation or things that I came up with myself. So you may not necessarily agree with them, but they may they may be of use to you. Um, okay, so we've got the scripts running. We've got the scripts installed uh, on each of these vehicles. Now we have to create a, a flag texture. So. Uh, I'm going to go in. I've already made some flag textures. In this case, um, the flag is 256 by 128 in dimensions. Um, 
I'm just going to make some arbitrary uh, image, black background, you know, circle, and then a that's a JPEG file, and then uh, which is fine for flag texture, uh, as long as it doesn't require transparency background. If you need, like in this case, the second flag, the flag that will replace this flag when the vehicle has been destroyed, obviously we need a transparency section because part of the flag's been destroyed. So. Um, what I've done here is, and I've saved this as a PNG file, we'll convert it to a PAA because PNG, uh, you can't use PNG in Armour 3. So um, I basically just deleted part of the flag, used a blur, um, a smudge brush, I use a burn tool, which basically just changes the, the hue to a darker reddish brown. And essentially, that's the texture I ended up with. So that's flag 2 png that's flag one dot jpeg very important okay so now what we do is we go into um armor three tools so if you don't have armor three tools um you can install it just go to your library go to tools go find armor three tools click on it install it's all nice and free courtesy of bohemia um, all right, so let's just install, I mean, let's just run Armour 3 Tools. Because the reason we're doing this is because we're going to change the image to PAA file. So what we do is we grab the PNG file, must be a PNG. Go to there, drop it in, flag 2, PNG, process the file, yes. Bump out, pops the image, flag 2, PAA. So what we'll do is we'll um, we'll go here, drop the flag to P and, uh, PAA in, which I've kind of already done, and the flag to uh, flag one dot JPEG. Okay. Then we now have the flag, the the standard flag image, and we have the burnt flag image. As I said, the burnt flag image must be a PAA converted from PNG. So that the transparency layer is uh, is visible. Okay, so now we need to get to the little script. Um, and it was actually quite surprisingly difficult to to do this. I mean, deleting the flag after the the vehicle is destroyed is relatively simple, but replacing the flag was a little bit more tricky. Um, the important thing is that all of these commands are have an, a global effect, meaning that in a multiplayer game. These are going to um, be synchronized and, and uh, uh, synchronized across the multiplayer network and with all clients. So it's critical that you run it on the server because if you run this on each individual client in a, through the editor, um, the risk is that you'll have multiple in, mul multiple instances running of each of these objects, uh, dependent on the number of client machines that are connected. So um, in this instance, uh, remember we passed this being the vehicle to the script. So we need to pull that vehicle identity out of the script. And we do this using uh, this select zero. The first, the zero is the first element in the array. So vehicle is the vehicle that we're putting the flag on. The flag we're going to use is an RHS flag. Uh, we're going to just create it with a standard position. Um, or zero. Then um, we're going to attach it to the vehicle, and these these attachment um, x, y, and z uh, positions are through a lot of trial and error, mostly error. Um, then we set the vector direction and up, which was mostly error. Again, took a hell of a long time to find the exact position. Best way to do that is to switch on the debug console in the editor and to run that command until you position the flag exactly the way you want it by manipulating these um, this, these arrays. And once you've got it in position, you can copy the data out of the um, debug console, stick it in a script. Um, so then what we do is we set a flag texture, which is, uh, in this case, uh, flag1.jpg. I think it was flag1. Yeah, flag1.jpg. And then, uh, so that's the default flag that will be immediately added to the vehicle. At the same time, it then adds uh, a multiplayer event handler. Again, this is very important. If you're using multiplayer event handler, 
don't run it on all the clients because you're going to end up with a nightmare and it'll kill your frame rate because you know, you'll have hundreds of flags. I know this because I did it. Um, okay, so um, we're going to run uh, an add, of, add an MP event handler called MP killed, multiplayer killed. So when the vehicle is destroyed, it's going to do this thing, this bit. Um, so the first thing I do is I delete the attached objects because it's very difficult to, to find or to pass the flag to the event handler. And I struggled to do that, so I, I basically kind of crypt. And I just thought, because I know there are no other objects attached to the vehicle, so I will delete all attached objects that are attached to the vehicle and in this case I can re reference vehicle with this select zero so I remove the flag that any flag that's on the vehicle it's also a double check in an event that for some reason I made a mistake and I've added more than one flag it'll remove all attached objects um, it's also dangerous I mean it's also uh, an issue if you for example have have other objects attached to a vehicle then obviously you'll have to adjust the script and maybe there is a way of pulling a local variable. I didn't want to have to write a script for every single or, or do this manually for every single vehicle because uh, as it happens in this particular mission, I've got like over 30 vehicles that are going to have flags on them. And that's a lot of extra work. So I needed one script for each of the different types of vehicles. Um, the reason I have to have a separate script for each vehicle, I mean, I could do this all in one script, but it just seemed simpler to just have four scripts. So it's small, don't take up a lot of space. Um, is because you have uh, obviously the attached two points are different and the set vector direction up different as well. So um, anyway, so then we repeat the then I create a new flag after the flag when the when the vehicle is destroyed, it will remove the existing flag off the that's attached to the vehicle. Uh, it will then create another flag. In this case, it uses flag two dot paa, which is the um, the burnt up flag. And then uh, it removes the event handler because we don't need it any longer because it's done its job. And essentially, that's what that's for the BRM, the BTR, the gas. Now the gas is slightly different um, simply because the flag is going to be positioned directly behind the um, cockpit. So if you want to call it a cockpit, I wouldn't know what you call this. The cab. Okay, so the, the flag's probably going to be about here. So it's not going to be an angled, so I don't need to use set vector direction and up. So there we have it. So, um, and then off-road um, is going to be angled at the back, so we've got to set vector direction and up on that, on that one. All right, so those are the um, different scripts that are going to be run, and we've, um, let me just close this. We've run these scripts, uh, as you can see, uh, at the beginning uh, of this video, I showed you where I placed the the script that's been called, and that's in the init field on each of these vehicles. So let's see what it looks like. Okay, I'm going to unit here, so I'll drop the unit down, and I'll very useful for testing uh, where you don't want to re recreate a new player. Very useful feature: player as the character. Alright, so there we have our strange looking flags. Um, if you just have a look at the offset, do not be alarmed by the firing. If you are following this series of videos, then you'll know that that's the shooting range where guys are getting some practice. So um, there's the flag and it's offset, so when the other units are sitting on this vehicle, if there are any, they're not going to be obstructed. Same thing applies here. Um, I think the offset's about right. It doesn't seem to uh, interfere with other with the units sitting on it. Uh, this one here is stuck through the roof. I think it just about works. Um, it's just slightly outside of the arc of the gun. And then you've got um, the off-road. Okay, so now let's destroy the vehicles. The vehicles are all quite close together, so there's going to be like a chain reaction here as the event handler kicks in. 
um, on each machine. So uh, I'm just going to kill them with a cursor target set damage one. So I'll, I'll kind of look at that guy and uh, start the explosions. Huh. Chain reaction didn't really take place, so I'll just kill that guy. That's better. And I'll kill this guy as well. Okay. So now if we run over to the vehicles, and I am currently in god mode, so I'm not going to get damaged. My damage is off. You can see the flag is kind of animating, and it's it's a little too it's a little too curvy and so on the texture. So I need to do a bit of work on that. But um, the point is that I've I've made a lot better looking burnt out flag textures. I'm not going to use them for this because I. So they're not firstly appropriate for the video, and secondly, um, I think uh, it's more of a surprise when you, if you ever play this mission. Um, so basically, that's how you can create. If you want to use these scripts, um, you can get subscribed to the mission on the Steam Workshop. I'm going to be releasing it in about two or three days. I just want to optimize the frame rate a bit better, and then uh, you can DPBO it and take all of the scripts out that uh, you want to use. Thank you very much for watching and please subscribe if you found this useful and if you've got ideas or things that you'd like me to produce uh, or make some videos of, please, please let me know. Thanks a lot. Cheers.